with respect to some of the, the comments that were made earlier about legal, legal status is becoming a proxy for, for racism. Uh, I tell every group of Hispanic whatever, Chamber of Commerce, uh, students, uh, whether they're Puerto Rican, Cuban, Central American, Mexican American, legal or not legal, we are all Mexican when it comes to immigration because they look at us and think we're all Mexican and we're all here illegally. So for those who, no, really, so for those families who think, well, we're safe because we're legal, well, when the sheriff is pulling you over because you look Mexican and you look illegal, that's a problem. I would hope another modest proposal uh, is some effort really to forge a policy consensus uh, between uh, leading voices in Mexico and efforts at progressive immigration reform in the United States on an agreed upon set of principles. This question of how to construct a future flow program that does not create a permanent underclass is a very complicated piece of policy design and political strategy. Uh, and it strikes me that trying to do those two things, the policy design and the political strategy, without some serious conversation between Mexicans on the one hand and immigration reformers in the US is dangerous because we can be played off against each other uh, in ways that I think uh, will prove quite unacceptable. I think that that there is um, that we're locked in this uh, debate of enforcement uh, comprehensive. And actually, if we look at immigration over the last 20 years, the policies that immigrants react to or immigration is impacted by more than anything is the policy within the sending or lack of policy within the sending country. That even in recession in the 1990s, yes, we're going to get some drawbacks now. But the numbers have only gone up, and now I think the numbers, they were at 700,000 a year, they're now at 500,000 a year. And the push factors from the sending countries, the dependency on remittances, you know, the na it's practically national policy in some Central American countries, mm -hmm. like migration. Um, they're greater than ever. Right. So regardless of what is passed in Washington, these push factors are going to continue. And I think this is where, you know, American people begin to feel nothing is changing. And they're absolutely right. And something that I think that this group might, you know, sort of do in kind of refocusing the debate as a binational group is pushing for some more foreign aid. Foreign <coughs> policy in the U.S. has to change. Policies within the country's sending has to change or the numbers are never going to change. And, and our history tells us that. Thank you. I'd like to pick up on Maria's comment that the path is really through a center-left coalition in the United States. And say that the context in which the current uh, anti-immigration animus exists is in the declining wages and benefits of native-born workers over the last 40 years. Uh, and that this is uh, what makes it easy for uh, scapegoating of immigrants to take place. And that to, uh, to my mind, the best way to create the conditions for, for uh, comprehensive immigration reform is actually to pass universal health care and labor law reform in the United States. Because the task in the United States, I believe, is to make the belief in economic change more powerful than the fear of cultural change.